If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So we're going to harvest our beets. These are the Salindra beets. They typically take about 65 to 70 days. I think these have been in there a little bit longer. Uh, these are in 60 gallon grow bags from uh, rootmaker.com. They come in a variety of different sizes from one gallon up to 60 gallons and also pop up raised beds. So we're going to harvest this bed here is all, all of the one variety. The other bed there I think is Detroit uh, red beets is what those are. So you can see how nice these look. They're nice and long. You, they don't, they, you, you would think they would need a lot of depth. They do not. Uh, they, they grow very well in, well, this is 10 inches of soil here. So some of them are a little bit bigger than others. Here's a nice one here. And it's a smaller one, but I want to clean this bed out. And beets can be planted in the spring. They can be planted in the fall. Again, about 60 days out. They can handle a little frost, but a hard freeze, they're not going to do very well. They're going to get mushy. So you don't, planting them in the heat of the summer is just not an option. Uh, when they're young, the beet greens are edible. At this point, they're going to be very tough and almost um, very chewy. So we're really, we're growing it for the, the root, not the uh, greens at this portion. So that one didn't, uh, that one got crowded, this one got crowded, and that one got crowded. So that's why we have to thin the beets. When they grow, they grow in a cluster, and that's why you have to pull. Um, here's another good example. Those two together, they really restrict the root development um, whenever they're growing, if they're uh, crowded. So that bed's... There's nothing left there but a few weeds. So let's go over to this other bed here. It's got the large beet, uh, the regular bulbs in them. All right, we're in the middle of the day lilies here. I know that this one here, that's tennis ball size there. It's a good beet. Let's see what else. Not all of these, not all of these are going to be ready. So I'm going to have to pick and choose here because I want these bulbs to develop. And you can kind of tell based on, this one seems... Decent, okay. That's a different variety, I believe. I don't know. We may have planted two different varieties in this bed here. Some of these are going to be small just because of the way they're growing. I mean, at that point, they're not really going to get a whole lot bigger if they've been in the ground a long time. They're just going to get tougher. But I am going to let some of these set. I'm going to harvest some of them as well. Smaller one there, uh -huh. decent sized one there. Another decent sized one. That's got some um, dog vomit slime on it, which is fine. We just clean it off. It's not going to affect the, uh, veg the uh, vegetable. So that one wasn't going to develop very much. So. Uh, that's pretty much all I got in this bed here. Not a bad harvest. Very pleased with the size of the, the slender, uh, slender beets, the first ones we harvested. The other ones, hit and miss, uh, but very pleased with them. So now what I need to do is I need to cut the tops off. So when I cut the tops off, I'm just going to cut the greens and the stalks off just so it's not something I have to take in the kitchen. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and store these in the fridge in an airtight bag. It's amazing how long they'll last before they get kind of so soft. Um, and then we can pickle and that's how we do it. Now you can do oven roasted beets, you can do a lot of different things with them. But we pickle the beets, we've always liked that and it's worked very well for us. So the harvest of the beets, not too bad. So what you just saw, we harvested several uh, months ago. We're in early November now. We're going to finish cleaning up the uh, beets here in our 60-gallon grow bags from Rootmaker. <clears throat> and regardless of the size now, we are going to go ahead and harvest all of them. Now you can see 
there's a couple of tail signs here that the plant was a little stressed because we didn't have enough water on it as it shot a lot of roots off. Now this will occur on many of your root crops, uh, including carrots. So what we're going to do is harvest all of these and then um, before we take them into the house, we'll go ahead and trim the tops off so we're not dragging that in and dragging that out. So that's a nice beet there. And some of these uh, are smaller in stature, but they will all roast up just fine. Like something of that there, we're not even going to worry about. These are decent size ping pong ball and almost tennis ball size beets. They might be just a little more woody than what they would normally be due to the fact that we've left them in far longer than the recommended 60 to 70 days. Uh, what we have put on this bed here was pine needles as a mulch to hold moisture and that's what has helped the germination rate and then also the less stress on some of these uh, beets here. So not bad there. That's a decent one. Some of these smaller ones not really worth the effort. Come over here. I do have a couple of more here that we left from the previous harvest and that will do it. So beets we found that beets do not do well in our particular garden in the ground, but they do very well in raised beds. The key is good moisture to the seed at the time of planting. That's why we applied the mulch to get good germination rate. And then you also have to thin the seed because each seed cluster contains three to five seeds. And if you don't um, thin them out, you're going to, in return, get a lot of green growth at the top and very small roots. And that's what the case in some of this instance is. For more information, please visit the Wisconsin Vegetable